Hey, if you've heard of Scrivener, but its complexity kind of intimidates you, then you're in luck. I'm going to be breaking down Scrivener into little digestible bites so you can maximize the software to write amazing stories. Hey friends, let's talk about Scrivener, specifically today the insert menu. And by talk, I mean I talk and you leave comments down below. Ask me questions or tell me about your favorite Scrivener features. So the insert menu right here is how we put lots of neat things into our text. So let's get started. A table, we want to insert a table, we click here. The default is two columns, or sorry, two rows and three columns. If I want to change that, this is where I will do that. And also from here, I can select what my alignment is within the cells themselves, where the text goes. So if I want everything up at the top or in the middle or down at the bottom, and then I can change the color. Yeah, so I can change the color of the, the outline, the box itself. If I want a background, I can change it in here too to a color fill. And that is how we insert a table. I don't really want the table, so I'm gonna remove table. Okay, it's a lot of space. All right, next, insert an image from file. So this is pretty standard, right? Image from file, and if I click this, it will bring up a like a file navigation menu, and I can I can select whatever folder that file that I want is is in and then I can bring it into and it will download it into my text. But let's say that I don't really want the whole thing in here like taking up space. I can just link it instead. I can say um, image linked to file and then instead of importing the whole image it will link to one for reference if I want that. So it's not in, it's not making my Scrivener file huge. It's not taking up a bunch of space. Um, that will cause Scrivener to run slower so if that's happening to you, it might just be because you have too many images and you need to get rid of some or you can link them to those wherever those images are stored on your machine. Image to a linked document. So I have linked these two things within this project. So this is a, an image that I have included in here. I don't know where I put it though. Oh, here it is. So in notes, I've got this image down here. So it's been kind of included in the project. So if you have a project, like let's say for example, if you've read, um, what's that book called? The the Angels and Demons by Dan, the the guy that wrote the Da Vinci Code, that guy, well, I can't remember his name. You all know who I'm talking about. In his book, Angels and Demons, um, on a lot of the pages, he had these images of various code things. And so if you have something like that, where you need the same image, linked within the text so the reader can read it in multiple places, then you can upload the image into wherever. I put it in my notes folder just because it made sense to me to put it there. You can put it wherever you want and then you can insert it into your text in various places. Insert a comment and this opens a, like if you are editing or if you're working with a co-writer and you guys are leaving comments for each other, this will open up a new comment with the selected text. So let's say, this is, I love dialogue, and, and I go, you know what, I wanna leave a comment. So the comment will pop up over here in the comments and footnotes section, and I can go, this is great, and leave a comment. I love dialogue, me too, I also love dialogue, this is a great dialogue comment. And so that's how you can add in those comments. If you want, you can change the color from, by right clicking on it, and then we can also zoom in if, if you need to. An inline annotation, so wherever my cursor, I'm gonna select this, insert, inline annotation, and then it changes whatever I have highlighted to an inline annotation instead of just text. If I want to insert a footnote, I have this highlighted and the footnote is over here. So this footnote will be connected to this particular thing that's highlighted. An inline footnote is kind of the same as an inline annotation. So it will, if I have, this highlighted, it will change it to an inline footnote. Bibliography and citations. This only applies if a bibliography 
manager has been set up, which I haven't set up. So this is going to say not found, but you can download, upload and link bibliography and citation managers. And then this insert, that's where if you click this, it will launch that and bring that up so that you can kind of um, do your citations and bibliography in there. And then a math type equation, wherever your cursor is currently located, it will whatever. So I would have to download math type and I don't want to do that because I don't give a crap about math. So you can go to this website and you can download script, you can download the math type. And then if your manuscript has a lot of math stuff in it, or you're writing a paper that has a lot of math stuff in it, then you can use the math type equation from there. If you want to insert a break, so you can insert several kinds of breaks. So a line break, this is, it says a soft break um, instead of a full paragraph break. So if you need to create like a list, within a single paragraph, you want to use the line break instead of a like paragraph break. So shoot, I don't know. Yeah. Command option for California. So we'll do command option return and so that was with the command option return with both of those. And if I just hit regular return, it will take me back to the regular indentation. So that's kind of that's kind of the difference. Page break. Honestly, I don't really know why you would need a page break in here because the different scenes, the different sections over here, that's kind of what those are for. But I guess if you want a page break within your document, um, but that just means that when you compile it, wherever that page break is, it will cut that text so that the the text appearing below the page break will be on the next printed page or like word page or pages or whatever you're using instead of being on the same page as whatever was um, ahead of that page break. In a different video, I talked about when you are using Microsoft Word and you're working with like an editor, instead of at the end of a chapter, instead of just hitting enter or return all the way down the page until you get to the top of the next page, if you do command return, it will be be the page break. And so that's kind of a better practice for you. Your editor is going to take out all of those extra enters anyway, because when it's being formatted for actual print in the book, they can't have all those extra line breaks, basically all those extra like entered spaces because the back end metadata character things that are in there will disrupt the software that they use to compile that into like a printed book. So they will change everything to page breaks. And so if you just have it in there already, you're saving your editor tons of time. Hooray, we love doing that. So non-breaking space. So let's say that I want blah, blah, blah to be together no matter what. And so if it's at the end of a, do it right here, right? So it's split up, blah, blah, blah. So blah, blah on the first, and then that got bump down to the second because that's where the end of the line is. But I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to, so, okay. So I'm going to insert a non-breaking space. So now the these two words will not be split apart, even though there's room up here for this second blah, because I have that non-breaking space right here that means that these two words won't ever be separated by like one of them being on one line and the other one being in the line underneath it, if that makes sense. So um, if you have two words that really need to go together, that can't be split up, that's what you will use. You'll insert that non-breaking space. And a word joiner is one of those little gremlin words, those little gremlin characters, which acts as a non-breaking space, but it's not a space. So it's like the non-breaking space, except there's not a space involved. So like, um, I'm going to say, now with some some ways that things are set up, if I had like a dash in here, it would change that like that. I don't have it set up in this formatting, but sometimes you can set it up so that in order to prevent, like we see all this empty white space over here, in order to prevent that, this would automatically change to like that. So it would divide the word up. But let's say I don't want the word divided up. I want it, to stay together, I would insert a word joiner here. And so the word joiner means that this won't split up here, but there's no space, so it doesn't take up any room. 
this is pretty niche and this is when you've got like a big special fancy word that you're finding is being split up in an annoying way within your manuscript and this is how you prevent it you insert break those non-breaking spaces of the word joiners to keep a word together all right it's horizontal line if you want to include a horizontal line this is how you include it Ta -da! i have a horizontal line oh i split up my word <laughs> um if you want horizontal lines anywhere that's how you add it in. Um, it can do the whole page, or you can do just a signature line if you want somebody to sign something or centered in the page. Those are your options. So you don't have to do like an underscore all the way across because that would be kind of weird. All right, insert auto numbers. So these things are placeholders within the text. So like auto number, if I click that. So this placeholder pops up here. The the placeholders are a video unto themselves that I'll have to do later, but this is kind of where you can find some of them. So that's a placeholder for numbers. The draft word count. So on your title page, when you are like submitting your manuscript to an agent or to wherever, and they, they want the word count approximately in there. And so what you can do is you can either have the exact, which is not really recommended when you, you know, on your title page, you want to do, I want to say it's to the nearest 100 is, is kind of the standard. So you click that and then here's the code for it. And you would just throw that up at the, I want to say front router. So let's do manuscript form. Okay. Title page. Yep. Here we go. So that's where, that's what this is. When you have completed your whole manuscript, when you compile this or print it or whatever, this is what the word count will go and it will round it to the nearest 100. Draft character count. So this was for the word count. This is for the character count. If that is something that you care about, if you want to know how many characters you counted, this is individual words, punctuation marks, spaces, that kind of thing, this is what you will estimate to, or you can exact it. So this will add in that code. The endnote marker only works in certain formats. Uh, it works in when you're printing. It works if you are making this a PDF. If you are doing, um, uh, what is it, rich text, regular text, or HTML. This doesn't work in a docx. Unfortunately, Word does not like the endnote marker code, and so it will ignore it. But all of the endnotes are the footnotes, right, over here. So we've got our footnotes over here. It will collect all of them and put them wherever this endnote marker is during your compile. For like, if you're writing an academic paper and you're exporting it into a PDF or a rich text document or a text document, you can place this endnote marker at the very end and it will compile all of your footnotes into an endnote, which is kind of like having a bibliography, a little bit. Current date and time, click that, and that's that's the time right now that I am recording this. So if you need a date, a date and time stamp, like if you're timing yourself for writing or editing or whatever, and you want a really quick way to annotate that within your text, that's how you can do it, insert current date and time, or you can do command, option, shift, D as the keyboard shortcut. And then there's the media timestamp. If you have like a media player going, it will include that timestamp. So like if I had like an associated, um, my QuickTime player was associated with my Scrivener and I was playing a video and I was doing like timestamps in there, then that's what I would just press this and whatever the time was in that video, it would leave a timestamp within my document. Anyway, this is way shorter than my last video. My edit menu video went really long, but this is like half of that. Yeah, I'm gonna end it here. Thank you for tuning into this video and I hope you learned something new about the insert menu. If you like this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Wash your hands, Black Lives Matter, and have a nice day.